Hello, everybody. I still haven't sorted out that uh, music <laughs> fading in rather than just stopping dead. It's like, oh, hello, we've, we've lied. Yeah. So, again, we're in with our F4U Corsairs. And uh, you've got me, Steph, and you've got him, Malcolm. Hello. So, uh, James is watching already. Uh, he says, well, afternoon all. Afternoon, James. How are you doing? Hello. How are we doing? Hello. So, let's get straight into it, Malcolm. Mm. What have you been up to? Okay, so I haven't touched it since last we spoke. Blimey, I've ever said that before. But um, here we go. So, there we go. So, last time oh, we were on, let's put some lights on. Shall we? That would help. Um, I did a bit of the cockpit. So, the decals are all settled, obviously, because it's been a good seven days or so, six days, four, four days or something, from Friday. Um, yes. So, they're all settled in. So, I'm going to weather those down, put some, uh, might make some sort of seat up if I can be bothered. Maybe not. I don't think. I will actually. Um, and it's going to weather it up with a bit of silver and, and a bit of black and chip it all down. You're not going to see much because when the canopy's on, the canopy is going to be there. And then that, obviously that bit goes there. Yep. And that bit is going to be slid back a bit, I think. Are they slide back? Yeah, they do. So I'll have it back a little bit. Um, so it's going to have probably ivy grown out of it and stuff as well. So not too worried about it. And yep. then. See how I get on. That'll probably be enough for today, I expect. Um, cool. And also, at some point, I want to try and um, probably not do that today, but I want to try and see how thinning down model color goes because I've never done it. But, um, so I might take some uh, tips from yourself. Cool. But, but probably not today. So today will be cockpit. Yep. yep. Nice. What about you? What about you? What about you? I have progressed a bit from last week. I've done some stuff. Uh, let me just bring it up. There we go. So I've put some silver paint down, which Ooh. is, uh, what is it? Malcolm, remind me, what is it? Alclad? That's the little tinker, dark aluminium. Oh, yeah. So I've put yeah. some of that down. Uh, I've put a coat of... Uh, satin varnish down to protect that so it gives me something to chip over then i'm going to use uh alclad's zinc chromate yellow nice because mm -hmm. i love spraying this stuff and mm. i'm going to use that as my you know when you do sort of pre-shading and stuff like that and mm -hmm. so the blue shows different variation yeah yeah i'm, with I'm going to be using that for that so oh, okay. okay, yeah, that's what I'm going to be. I'm going to be spraying that today. Hopefully, right. Like... Yep, that's that's dried. Cool. Are you so, going to be doing yeah. any chipping effects on it, or um, are you going to do that? Yes, last? that's why I sprayed the silver, so I can do some chipping effects. Uh, I don't know whether you can see, but I've there you go, right in the middle there. I've redone all my rivets. Ah, uh, yeah. And I'm really chuffed with how they've come out. Oh, good for you. Yeah. What, what I used was one of these. Mm -hmm. And you ain't going to believe this. Copy Dex. <laughs> Copy Dex adhesive. <laughs> I think you should buy shares in Copy Dex. Just dip it in. It's not that stuff. That is for, uh, it's slightly different. Just masking stuff, isn't it? Yeah, that's mm -hmm. what I use for masking. Mm -hmm. uh, this, I uh, just put a bit on the end and then just dob it on. Hey. And it makes a great rivet head. Ah. And it's so much quicker to do. It's a lot faster than getting a bit of... rod and then chopping little bits off the end. Okay. Which I tried, and it's like, no, that's just too much aggro. I'm, I'm just looking around my desk going, what can I use? What can I use? And it was like, oh, yeah. I can use one of those, can't I? Uh, Yeehaw. So off you went. Off I went. Excellent. So that's we've got cool. some uh, comments. We've, just, we've seen James. James says, well, afternoon all. Uh, Mr. Marley's in. Evening. Evening, Hello, John. Hi. 
G'day, g'day, Bruce. And I've lost, where's my mouse? There it is. Right, let's get that out of the way. Um, and then uh, he's, he's, I'm COVID positive this morning. I've had better oh. days, but very thankful for vaccines. Oh, mate, that's not good. It's not good at all. No. Take a rest. Okay. Get an absolute shed ton of rest in. Uh, lots of fluids. Keep warm. And sit and watch us for an hour and a half. We'll well, put you, don't have, you don't have to get worse. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to feel better. <laughs> so if my brain's too noisy, Malcolm, let me know. Okay. Okay, dokey. So what have you been up to this week? What's been new? Um, what have I been doing this week? Not a lot, really. Uh, did the show yesterday. Uh, and apart from doing the show yesterday, I was running around like a blooming idiot, which you do. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm just checking my air pressure on my. Can go down a bit. There we go. Right. Yeah. Because this is quite thin, you've got to go low low pressure. Because I'm going to try and do fine lines as you do. But I absolutely love spraying with Alclad. Goes on so nicely. Yeah, and I've sprayed it. I've only ever used um, the filler. Funny, isn't it? Funny. <clears throat> I think it's because I never could spray. Well, I can now, but I, I, in the old days, I couldn't spray anything super smelly. Yeah, um, because I was indoors or in the garage, and I didn't have the proper suction. <laughs> to call it, you know, proper yeah. uh, <clears throat> extraction. But now I do, so I could spray it. But uh, just haven't. Let's see. So I've got some mini putt there. It's pretty old. I don't know if it's going to be good enough for turning into a cushion. But we'll see. It's quite cold. Isn't it? <laughs> It's it, yes. How are you dealing with the cold? Have you got a no, that's fine, nice and warm? Yeah, I well, yeah. I've got um, I've got no gaps. Well, that's a lie, I've got some gaps, and um, you can see it on the camera, not really, but that's uh, that's my door, that's the one that's open, the one that actually yeah. opens. that one's locked up and doesn't, doesn't open. Any, well, it does open if I have to, <clears throat> but obviously, I've got the table in front of it. So the table falls down and the door can open if I want it to. But that's all sealed up, that side. This door, on this side, um, there's a gap at the top where the bolt is. There's a gap, obviously, yeah. where the keyhole is. And then nice. there's a thin gap at the very, very bottom where the door is just not square. <laughs> um, and those those three points are where all the air comes in. Um, and I've, I've done some attempt at sealing them up with this kind of brown sealant thing um everywhere else in this entire shed is totally sealed apart from the two um vents in the in the top of the eaves would they call them yeah not soffits uh i didn't know um but i've got an extract fan that side and then an in, in vent that side which i can seal up um but this morning i came in here and it was five degrees and two degrees outside oh nice yeah so it's uh it's yeah, it's pleasant, pleasant. And I got a, a heater behind me that's just set on low, just kind of takes the edge off, I guess. And yeah. The air a bit. Um. Uh, oh, um, totally scale models. Steve is in. Uh, Mr. Marley says thanks, Mum. Uh -huh. Welcome, John. And Steve says hi, Steph. Hi, Joseph. I mean, Malcolm. Yeah, he's got his technical dream coat on. <laughs> yeah, so my shed shed clothing, shed wear for him. It's the winter shed wear. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, it looks smart. It does look like a bit. Um... Gosh, what's the name of that guy? What's 
the name of that dude that was up the tree in Newbury? Um, Swampy. Who? <laughs> there's, there's a chap when they were building the Newbury bypass. Oh yeah. Back in the nineties, this would have been. There was a, a very famous hippie guy, tree hugger, called Swampy, and he was. Um, or oh, on the TV, obviously, around Hampshire and Berkshire, because he was he was stopping all the traffic and all the development of the the new new bypass, which got built in the end. So he became quite famous from that, and I think he still does lots of um, activism and things like that for Greenpeace and stuff like that. But he used to wear things like this, which is quite a hippie hippie thing. Oh, yeah, I think. Yes, I, I remember who you mean. Yeah. Well, I don't have the... Uh, well, I had a shower yesterday, so... <laughs> yes, I was there when all the young ladies were there. Well, oh, you're talking about Greenham, or are you talking about Newbury? Greenham. Oh, I see. Yes, I did uh, I did my stint at uh, Greenham Common mm -hmm. in the uh, mid-80s. It was after all the big stuff. Uh, I was there eighty six. Uh -huh. But yeah, the ladies were still there. And I'll be honest, we had some, and things. Yeah, we had some really interesting conversations because we'd meet down the pub afterwards and chat. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them, they they understood exactly why we we felt the way we did. Um, we understand the way they felt. Mm -hmm. And if you'd have left it up to us, we'd have probably got it all sorted. Because yeah. uh, there were some of them, though, that just didn't get the concept of mad, you know, mutually assured destruction. Yeah. They just didn't understand it. Oh, no, the Russians would never do that if we disarmed. Oh, please. Yes, they would. You really are not that naive. Tell me you're not that naive. Oh no no no! The Russians would definitely not come in, and no, no. it's like, oh dear, bless your cotton socks, my lovely. But I hope these things happen. Hmm, not worth the risk. No, because you know, I know, the tink little tinkers of Russians—they would come in at any chance they got, especially with a certain person they've got at the moment. Although. He might not be with us for much longer. <laughs> Apparently. Who knows? Who really knows? Uh, we'll never know until he actually pops his clogs. Even if he does pop his clogs, will they actually tell us he's popped his clogs? Or will they just find somebody who looks like him to wander around going, yes, I'm Putin? Don't know. Anyway, we're getting uh, uh, off modeling. Don't my, my Millie put um, John says, use your old Millie put in the card the, in the door gaps. <laughs> well, the thing is, is I if I did, then I wouldn't be letting the door again. So, <laughs> good idea. Yeah. Uh, Steve says, I like it too, and it keeps you warm. It's great. Mm. Uh, you need to bring out a Models for Heroes shed clothing line. <laughs> That's a good idea, yeah. Why the hell not? Well, it could be anything, as long as it's got Models for Heroes written on it. Yep. <laughs> Just like uh, what I've got on at the moment. Yeah. Clothing for the discerning gentleman. One of the so the keyhole that I have in in the shed is a, is a, just a source of um, breeze and uh, heat loss, but I can't seal it because the key goes all the way through. The, uh -huh. the end of it sticks out. You know, it has to have a you know, a gap on it. Yeah. And also, I'd like to be able to have it so I can lock it from the inside and the outside at once. So I need to get like a key that has two ends on it. Does that make sense? 
Like two keys facing each other, welded together, so I can lock oh, yeah. it on the inside and the outside. But I'm not sure how that's going to work because I've got nothing to latch it closed. At the moment. It's just closed on um, sort of friction. Yeah. And I need something to hold it closed. Uh, I did buy one of those uh, shed latches, but you have to cut another hole in behind the door. So you could, it's like a thumb latch. Oh, yeah. You know, um, so you have a thumb latch, lift the thing up, but you have to have a hole through it. And I just thought, well, that'd be another bloody hole that I've got to fill. <laughs> so I want to use the key of a time, but I can't think of how to use it. Because if I, I don't want to be a latch it closed on the inside, and then I have my heart attack or my stroke or something here, and that's it. I'm, you know, this is my coffin then. <laughs> yeah. Well, the way I've done mine is I've got, uh, you know, the old hook, the the bar and the hook that holds it in. Um, oh yeah. Type stuff i've got that but i've got a piece of wire running into the shed that if i need to get out i just pull that and it unhooks it oh, so how do you hook it from the inside then uh you pull it shut and i've got it in oh, such it... a way that when you pull it shut the actual latch kicks in oh like so it's like a it's like a thumb thing is it yeah Ah. Stop rushing. Take your time. I'm terrible for that. I think I've got to get it done. Do it now. Spray <laughs> it. Go fast. And it's no, don't. Enjoy. Um, John says, if Malcolm can't get out of his model shed, I'm at a loss to see how that's a problem. <laughs> well. There you go. Uh, Dominic's in. Hi, hi. Here from the Netherlands. Hello, hi. Dominic. Oh, right. There's real life. Carry on, says John. Yes. Bodily functions, for instance. Eat. Right. I've manipulated this old millipot, but I've never used it before. Does that, does that look right? It's quite crumbly. How old is it? I don't know. I've had it for ages. A year or two? I'm not sure. I don't, it's not something I use. Hmm. I don't have anything else. Or do I? Hmm. I want to make a little seat. That's all I want to do. A little cushion. Okay. Nice idea. Yeah. That's all I want to do. Add a bit of water, says John. Oh, is it water based? I know you can use water to smooth it down. Okay. Let's see. Add a 
bit of water. Right, what else we got in the comments? Uh, da, 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 da. We've caught up, have we? Yep, I had a bit of water. A bit of water. Well, I'm drooping again. <whistles> yep. Drooping? Uh, yes. My my seat keeps dropping. The gas cylinder and it's gone, so I have to keep doing that and get back to my normal height <laughs> so I can actually see what I'm doing. I should be used to it being a short ass. It, uh, how long have you had that now? It must have been a couple of years. Uh, yeah, birthday, it's didn't you once? A couple of years, this one. It's the second one I've had. I was wondering if you need it, need to even have the gas cylinder in it. Do you need to have it low sometimes? Uh, no. Just drill it, bolt it that size. Oh, it's gone all messy now. Has it gone a bit wrong, Malcolm? Well, it's still quite crumbly. Uh, right. It's like trying to squeeze together a bit of ham and bear or something. Oh, lovely. <laughs> it's gone a bit peat tall. Eek. So, yeah, I don't know what I've got. I can't use anything else, really. I haven't got anything else. I don't do any... Uh, Sculpting or anything. Hmm. Oh, please. Hmm. Yep, yeah, everything is done. Run just in time because I've run out of paint, so. <laughs> Pop that back. That's done with. So is that going to be your your under coat back black basing kind of thing? Is it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. And then you're going to use your um, copy decks stuff over the top of that. Um. Not. Sh no. I'm just going to use a. Uh, oh yeah. Toothpick. Gotcha. Uh, once I've done the uh, the blues and stuff. So let's start off with a light blue. So I'm going to start off with light blue, RLM 65. Uh -huh. Done very, very thin. Is that model colour? Yeah, this is model air. Ah, hey. So the first thing I do is uh, clean my airbrush. <laughs> Step one. Are you watching the football this evening? Um, Might do. Oh, you've gone off it now. Yeah, well, we're out, so. Well, uh, you could always uh, cheer on Croatia now. Oh, no. <laughs> well, yeah, to beat Argentina. Yeah. Croatia Morocco final. <laughs> that would be something else, wouldn't it? Yeah, oh, yeah. I'd laugh. Poor old Messi. Uh, Steve says, Steph, what program are you using to show three cameras? OBS, mate. OBS. Yep. So I've got my. Brio, which is my normal one that I use to film stuff with. I've got my front cam over there, which looks down on my desk. And then I've got me cam. So you can see them all in that one shot there. So, yeah, that's what I use. Um, what do you use, Malcolm? 
Um, I used to use OBS, but I found it was just too um, um, resource heavy for my machine. Yeah. Um, and I think I, I think actually now I'm thinking about it, it's probably because I didn't use the right USB ports and I was using USB hubs instead. Ah. And I was using it, and that really messes it all up. Yes. And it was kind of hit and miss as well. Sometimes it would work, sometimes it didn't work. And you know, when you're running a show, I didn't want the I didn't want the uh, the risk of it not working. Yeah. But when it, when it did work, it was brilliant. Um. And but all I use now, I just plug in two cameras directly in, and then I would switch them over manually on Streamyard. So I just press settings and then switch the camera. Okay. Yeah. Um, Mr. Marley says. Uh, a question to all watching. What will I build next? An Edward 148 Fucker Wolf. And there goes Malcolm. Oh! And he's back. Don't, don't play with the, with the webcams when you're on the show. <laughs> yeah, don't play with them midstream. Um, what will I build next? This is from Mr. Marley. An Edward 148 Fucker Wolf of 190. A Hasegawa P40 148 or HK's 132nd Lancaster No section. There's a winter group build on Facebook page I like. Should I ignore it? Well, that's all up to you. Depends what you want to do. Hmm. I wouldn't mind seeing the 190. Uh, Dave Skelly's in. Hello. Hello, Dave. Hello. How are you doing? Hello. What, Mike? Good night. Um, yeah, I'd do the 190. Yeah. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter who's doing what, you do what you want to do. Well, maybe he wants to do them all. He just can't decide. So he needs... Yeah. Uh, some outside input. Have you thought about what you're going to do for your Shelf of Doom group build, um, John? Maybe one of those if you don't get it finished. <laughs> what about you, Steph? You got an idea which one you're going to do? Yeah, I've got a KV2 that needs finishing off. So oh, that's okay. I will paint that white and get, grab myself a set of decals, put a tenor in the, in the jar. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Bob's your uncle. Yep. I've got um an ATST, and that's I haven't really got anything else that really would work. Um, so I'm trying to think. An ATST is a model for heroes transport. It doesn't make sense, does it? I could have it so that it's carrying a load of used kits or something. You know, in a in a net that he, that they would capture the Ewoks in. Yeah. I could do that, I guess. Why not? Yeah, yeah. It's just the only idea I have. I don't think it's a very strong idea. I want a better one. At the end of the day, we're painting them white and putting decals on them. <laughs> well, I'm going to be doing a little bit more. I'm trying to make it into something a bit more models for heroes -y. You know, like um, models for heroes transport or models for heroes. I don't know. Something tea deliverer. There you go. Sponsored by McVitie's. <laughs> Heavy duty stuffs out. <laughs> Universal thinners out. It comes. That cellulose stuff, is it? Yeah. Right, there's my seat cushion. Let that dry. Hopefully it will. Well, that's not fun stuff to play with at all. Yuck. 
I don't like that. I don't think I've ever used Milliput. Mm. Right, my, I'll keep my judgment because um, that was probably an old, too old. More than likely. Mm. Yeah. That's uh, the usual thing when it comes to modelling. Yeah. You don't. You think, oh, I could use that. Don't use it for about five years. Come to it, and it's knackered. Yeah, and then you're like, oh, it's shit. <laughs> Don't use it, shit. Uh, Dominique says, I also use OBS. My brother installed it for me. Yeah, it is a good mm. bit of software. I like it. Mm, yeah. Free. Uh, Mr. Marley goes, I've got a Taco Mark IV hermaphrodite that's been sitting around without track since 2018. I reckon it needs to be festooned with modern spirit hearts to confuse the Bosch. Oh, yes. There you go. There's your shelf of Doom build. Mm. Um, right, silver, silver. Uh, it's the only thing about airbrushing I really don't like. Cleaning. Yes. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah, no wonder it's not working properly. I agree. You got some lumpy paint in there or something? Oh, yes, a lovely, jubbly, lumpy paint. <laughs> there you go. I don't know whether you can see that. Not so, really. Drop I've that seen... in there. Out comes one of my favorite bits of my kit. Very good for stabbing people. They really annoy you. Stab, stab. A Rima. Oh, yes. My brushes. Mm -hmm. And my metal Rimas. Rima. Nothing but a Rima. That's the one. John wants to know, is there some of Malcolm's milliput in Steph's airbrush? <laughs> Probably. More than likely, would not surprise me. <laughs> yeah, this stuff's all over my blooming hands now. Yuck. <sighs> yeah, that. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Uh, a little off. bit of water or a little bit of baby powder. Yeah, try a bit of water. It's not having it. Okay. To get it off your fingers, try some baby powder. Baby powder. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm with you. Oh, dear. I don't think we have much baby powder anymore since the kids are older. Not something we use around the house. Yeah. Oh, good Lord, this is gunked up to buggery. Was it just that last colour you were using? No, it's... Oh, look at that lot that's just come out. Yeah. How the hell was I spraying using that lot? With that lot in there. <laughs> and there's still more in there. Oh, yeah. 
Got that in my head now. It's always good fun. We having all those little, little earworms. That's the one. Earworms. Uh, Mr. Marley goes, where did Steph purchase the gold reamer? Seen it before. I need it. Precious. <laughs> gold plated. Yes. Um, honestly, can't remember. I've had it that long. Uh, it's well worth getting, though, for your airbrush. Especially cleaning the this little nozzle that thing out. Do they come in lots of different colours, different sizes? Uh, probably. I think of something else. Might be thinking of something else. Good Lord. How the hell did that much shit get in there? <laughs> and what the thing I want to know is how the hell did I manage to spray with all that crap in there? Skill. Pure skill. I call it something, but not bloody skill. <laughs> Friggin' lucky. Skills. Oh, Dominique says, "Sorry, go." Um, Dominic says, "Steph, do you have an empty mixing cup? Then you can put the uh, nozzle in there with cleaner, and the paint will become soft and is easier to clean." There you right. go. Ah, yes. Steph <laughs> uh, cleaning his hairbrush is like an episode of Doctor Pimple Popper. <laughs> Doctor Pimple Popper. And there's Dominic. Yeah, I use these old uh, jam pots for hmm. cleaning my airbrush. So chuck a load of thinners in there. Yeah, and let it marinate. Yes. And then what I do is, uh, first thing I do when I get a new airbrush, take all the plastic seals out and change them. Sort them out for beeswax. Swap them out, yeah. Then that way they last a damn sight longer and they don't get chewed up by the uh, paint and the thinners and yeah. everything else that you use in there. Right. Let's see uh, how this is. There we go. Clean. One clean airbrush. The thing is, though, not one of the blockage colours was alkaline. Huh. Which is one of the reasons I love using alkaline. Because you just swill it through. With a bit of uh, thinners, yeah, enamel thinners, not uh, acrylic thinners, and it just cleans it straight away. Sweet, it's great. Yeah. Right then, let's crack on with uh, doing the first coat. So I'm going to be using RLM 65 light blue. And do that on all the inside of the panels. Just a light dusting. Which one? 
that one. RLM, mm-hmm. RLM 65, 71255 in Vallejo Model Air. Oh, wow, yeah. Super light, yeah. Mm-hmm. And get my homebrew. So you're going to build it light to dark? Yep. Cool. So I've I've weathered the inside of that just with one colour so far. Yep. Let's put some brain in there. And I'm just gonna hair dry it, dry it off. And I'll probably yep. put some dry brush with a bit of silver as well. So let me just uh mute and I'll have a hair dry, okay? Okay, dokie. Get that. Seems about right. I can go in the bin. Do it from a distance because I need it as need it quite thin. Go. Welcome back. Hey, hello. Oh, it's thin, isn't it? Nice. Yep. I'm just giving it a thin coat. That's all. Nothing hmm. spectacular. What's your PSI? My PSI is about five. Wow. Yeah. Because it's that thin. Mm. Uh, I'm full whack on a point uh, one five or two five. Um, Super small. Yes, I think it's a point. No, it's a point two. I lied. You lied to me. But as I say, it, it's it's very very thin paint, mm. as you can see. Yeah, build it up slowly. Yep. But this will probably be the only coat of this blue that I do. Take your time. Yeah. I had a dream last night. One of my best friends from school bought the Meng factory. Nice. And um, he said, oh, I just bought Meng. You might be interested. I said, oh, my God, what? He said, yeah, come over. I went to his house, and it was like a Meng. His house was a Meng factory. It was really weird. Nothing else happened. That was it. <laughs> What kind, of, what kind of dream is that? Uh, that? That's a really good dream. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, well, I, I don't think I've ever dreamt about models before. Haven't you? I don't think so. Oh, mate. You need to have those dreams. <laughs> I don't think I have. Weird.
crazy. Not too heavy, stuff, stop it. I'm very good at doing that. Mm. All of a sudden, just throwing a really thick coat on, and it's like, I need to get this done. Stop. No, you don't. You take your time. Just remember, slowly, slowly, catchy monkey. Yeah. It's a trouble, isn't it, when you start to sort of zone out? Yeah. Zone in, or whatever it is. Get in the zone. Yeah, too bloody eager. Right. I'll do a quick... No, I've just done a, a dark panel wash on the inside, just to kick... Oh, let's have a look then. Give me a sec. We'll pop you up. There you go. In the focus. Yeah, it's a quick panel wash uh, on there just to bring the insides out. Oh, that's quite a good shot. I should have done it like that. I could see then. That's <laughs> lovely. Yeah. Yeah, and then I was going to do a quick dry brush on it now. Dry it off again and then dry brush. Yeah. So I'm just going to moot again. Okay, dokie. Yep, there goes the hairdryer. There we go. So just hang that up on its hook to dry for a bit. Done. Nice. Oh, so uh, so useful having a hairdryer just plugged in next to you. Uh, I got mine down here somewhere. Useful. Um, that's all I'm going to use. Uh, Mr. Marley says both builds are coming along nicely. Is shooting for a zinc chromate primer or something else? A bit of both. I've done some zinc chromate and uh, black base. Uh, same as Malcolm. Malcolm, yeah. you, what have you used? Yeah, uh, X4. X4. Uh, yellow green. Oh, yeah, um, yes, that one. Cool. And I've used uh, Alclad Nil Spec ALC 104, <laughs> which is zinc chromate yellow. Cool it comes what, with its own ball bearing. I'm trying to make that effect there, so you can see on there, there John. I'm trying to make that effect is it the same as same as you isn't it steph yeah very much i like that I like it uh dominique says yes the point two needle is good to spray three or four psi oh, can you do me a favor and send me your link to your battery powered um uh Mr. Happy. <laughs> it's called, yeah, send me a link to that. Uh, <laughs> Gosh, oh, it's like an um, inverted nipple. Yes. It works an absolute treat, and it's only about 35 quid. Yeah. All because it's got tattoo on there, not modeler or model. <laughs> the, the same one is up there with modeler on it for 85 quid. It's disgusting. Where are we? Um... Oh, yes, I'm cleaning the airbrush again. 
It's disgusting. Gina. So, come on then, Malcolm. Tell us yeah. the story. How did you come about to start Model Heroes? Um, well, let me think. Uh, so, I... How did I start it? It was on Reddit. It was on Reddit. And I was looking up about clubs and model groups and that kind of thing. Yeah. Online and Facebook and Twitter and everything else. You know, trying to get into the hobby and find out what's what's out there. Mm -hmm. And then uh, and there's a there's a Reddit group called Model Makers or Scale Modelers or something like that. And they had on there an ad an advert from a chap called John Emery. And he was asking to people to send him model kits um, to donate for guys that are sat doing nothing under a tent in the middle of Iraq or Afghanistan, I think it was at the time, actually. Yeah. Because they're bored out of their minds. And it comes from when he had sent his son, who was serving out there, um, a model kit for something to do. And all his mates there was really jealous and said, oh, could you send more, Dad? So he did. And all his mates were really happy. And then the commander heard about it and said, oh, can you send more? <laughs> so they sent more. And then he realized that loads of people from around that he knew in his own model clubs were sending him kits to send out. Yeah. So he ended up having to turn it into an actual charitable organization just to send kits out. Anyway, so he was he'd put... Um, a thing up asking for help, you know, yeah, um, internationally. And I sent him some kits, and I thought that was a really good idea. Sent him kits right over from wherever it was he was in Virginia, I think. And um, in the letter, I wrote, "So, do you know anything about um, uh, the UK version of mo of uh, models for troops, which is what his his organisation was called? Because mm -hmm. I'd like to see if there's something in the UK I, I could help with." And there's been um. He didn't know anything at all of anything. So there has been campaigns throughout the years, you know, send your kits to Headley Court or send your kits to Combat Stress, you know. And people had arranged um, these kind of um, collections before. Yeah. But nothing was ever done um, organized. Nothing was done so that it was a long-term collection. Mm -hmm. Nothing was done... Well, no, no, you know, it was just a kind of ad hoc thing, which is good. Um, but I thought I could do, I could do that, and I could do it all the time, and I could help some people and get them into the hobby, get people to take their take their minds off the crap that they have to put up with. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, that's certainly something I could do because you know, I know, I know how to make models and I my way, and I can show someone how to put plastic together, and if that makes someone smile for five minutes and I'm doing something good and I can get to make models at the same time. Yeah. So um, I, at the same time, kind of say a similar time, I was seeing a volunteer advertisement for different volunteers and things because my daughter had been, um, uh, I've been a stay at home dad and my daughter was now, well, both daughters were now at school. So during the day I had nothing to do. Yeah. And I didn't fancy getting a job or shit so a uh, lucky position where i don't don't have to to worry about that so much mm -hmm. so i um so so i said well i'll go and do some volunteering so i um got in contact with help for heroes which aren't too far away from me it's about 20 mile drive mm -hmm. or so. and um they do um well they do a thing called a recalling re rolling recovery hang on rolling recovery program rrp yeah rrp Rolling recovery program, and uh, yeah. a part of that is to kind of teach people, um, veterans, you know, people who just come out of the service or coming out, um, other things that are out in the world because 
you might have not experienced having a mecha model before. You know, since you left the army and or joined up in you know, at eighteen, you might not have known different things. So they take them rock climbing, they go kayaking, all sorts of weird stuff. You know, book binding, mm -hmm. just to kind of get your mind out of having to be in in the service, essentially. Um, yeah. So one of the things they did offer already, apparently, what well, they said to me was uh, model making. So I said, oh, right. yeah, help them out. And I said, great. So I went down there to have a look and have a meeting. And there, they had um, uh, they had a cupboard with some models in it, which is good. Um, and they had uh, an ice cream tub with some acrylic pillars in it and some uh, enamel paints and a, and a, and a, and a paintbrush. Um, that looked like a chimney sweep. Uh -huh. And they didn't have any glue at all. Um, and all the kits they had in their cupboards were started. Every single one of them. Oh, dear Lord. And so, you know as well as I do, if you were trying to try, and try, try to start the hobby, there is absolutely no way. There's just a very limited limited to tools you'd get any enjoyment out of it whatsoever yeah um and likely go well that's rubbish and not never go back to it again yeah move on yeah so i thought right i'll bring down i'm gonna clear out all your crappy stuff i'll bring down some of my own kits i'm gonna grab my guys from the newbury model club and then tell them to donate some stuff and i'll come down and put some paints in there and fill up with the glues and everything else and we'll start a proper um, modeling group down there when they do their ROP. Um, well, that's fine. So they did that and it, it became really popular. Um, and they find that because we were next to the art group or the art room, a lot of people were saying, Can I go and do the model making instead of art today? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which is fine, they can do whatever they like. But the, the person who was employed there to teach them how to do art was, was a bit nonplussed about it all. Um, but you know, if you if you ask somebody to build a Spitfire with you or arrange some flowers, which one are they going to choose? All depends on their inclination, really. I guess, but um, so the vast majority would probably build a model. Yeah, so um, it came from that. Really, um, they found that. If veterans were much happier to kind of leave their accommodation and head down to the craft room and sit and build a model all day and have a chat and talk about the worries and pains and difficulties while they were putting models together than they were if they were painting pictures of their family or pictures of you know all sorts of things so they so they put some effort into it and we got a, a regular job down there not a job so a regular um um, part of the modeling uh, RRP thing, yeah, regular slot, yeah, regular slot. That's the one. And um, and then because it was so popular, it started up at Colchester as well. Um, and Combat Stress got wind of it and they wanted to start them up. And I can't drive, I can't drive everywhere. Um, although I did at first, I was driving over to Colchester. Um, um, and that's where I met Dave Oliver. Who's mm -hmm. local to Colchester, and him and him, he and I ran the group down there for a while, and it just became too much to, to drive because I was driving driving to Tedworth, and I was driving to Colchester, and then I was going combat stress up at Leatherhead, and then and then um, Plymouth wanted to get involved as well, so the the help for heroes down in Plymouth as well, but I just couldn't go down there, so I had to start recruiting people and people yeah, that I didn't yeah. know as well, which was new. Yeah. I started to go to all the IPMS groups, or model clubs, model shops. No one was safe. <laughs> <laughs> Saying, you know, this is what we're doing. It's really good, and it's really helping, and can you help? And I guess it's just literally just grown from there. And mm. it got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And more people got involved. Um, it's, you know, it's gone from gone to Warhammer stuff, Wargaming stuff now. We're going to try yeah. and do some, get some railway stuff done this year as well. Branch out that way, and um, and yeah, and the model kits keep coming in, um, as well as the money, so we can do loads and loads of cool stuff, excellent, and help a lot of people. 
Yes. Which and we I never thought say, we would. Yep. I have to say thank you to you uh -huh. for this. Because it's uh, it's got me involved in something that stops me thinking about certain things. Yeah. And yeah. It's, it does. It, it helps so much. Got a quick comment here. We'll run through that one and then we'll go back to that. Uh, Matt Geo 11s. Hello, Matt. Uh, it says, uh, Hello, Matt. Hope Model Officer will do a 130 second Revel Corsair to go with that held over he did. <laughs> and then Model Officer says, No, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Why is that James? <laughs> He's still on that hell diver, isn't he? Mm. Seen other shiny things. Yes. He's got mm, Gantz Moya. He's um doing that group build build for the podcast, isn't he? The Battle of Bowls group build. All right. Cool. Look oh, under the key. Uh, is it the M6? Uh, M8. M8, the Wolverine. Is it the Wolverine? Oh, I, I, yeah. <laughs> Let's say yes. I don't know. Yeah. James says, I have enough to do, and Malcolm has set a new challenge. Have I? Ooh, what's that? I don't know. I don't know. I, doesn't, I can set a challenge. It doesn't mean you have to accept it. You can't blame me. <laughs> I did say something to him the other day. Yeah, I challenged you to finish something. I can't remember what it was now. Oh, dear. Right, where's my orders? Uh... Come on, where, are, where have you gone? What are you after? I'm looking for that link for you. Oh, the vibrating yeah. hole. Right, there we go. Ah, oh, Greyhound, James, James says. All right, that's an interesting car. Yeah, he's enjoying that. Right, there we are. £33.99. 33 yeah. Mm, okay. The thing is, though, right, here we go. Chuck the link in. Yep, there you go. Link's on its way to you. Thank you, sir. But if you're having a look in there, it's just like wow, that's that's one for. Uh, it's classed as tattoo makers. There's there's other ones in there, yeah. But the other ones are starting at forty five quid. Exactly the same one. It's forty actually forty six quid. Uh, it's an extra another thirteen quid, but it's exactly the same. Mm. Apart from the R RPMs are a little bit higher. You go, there's one that says model maker, yeah, 87 mm. quid. <laughs> it's like, what the hell? Does it but, need yeah. to have a high RPM? I guess it doesn't, does it? it? Just needs to move, yeah. Just needs to give it a good old shaky shaky. Just needs to, yeah. Oh, there you go, Greyhound. 
And James also says, oh, if you forgot already, Malcolm. About the new, ta new task for him. Can he remember now? Uh, Mr. Marley says, just hit midnight here. I need sleep. I'll be singing Super Tramp all night. Bye all. Yep. <laughs> Good. Nice little earworm there. <laughs> it is Super Tramp, yeah. Yes. Right. Night, Mr. Marley. You take care. Yeah, I'll speak to you soon. Uh, Matt says, my grandpa was a Pratt & Whitney, was at Pratt & Whitney long enough to work on Corsair and Blackbird engines. He's be proud of Malcolm. He'd be proud of Malcolm. Oh. And James says, they're nice stuff. One, one on my bench now. Cool. Right, we've done it now in 10 minutes. Do you want to do another 20 minutes or so? Can I do? Yeah. Do you want... Cool. Right, let's go for this one. Dark Prussian Blue. G four O one. G four O one. What's this? Yes. That's the thing you just sent a picture of everything you sent me. So I've got this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Right. Okay. Yeah. However, the reason I don't use it is because the um, when it's plugged in, yeah, it scares me. Because it just kind of vibrates quietly and hums and buzzes to to itself, and I don't trust the uh, the electronics in there. Ooh. So I wonder if what's yours look like underneath? Yeah. Okay. How do you change your batteries? I don't. Um, it's a rechargeable one. Oh, okay. So there'll be a battery inside. Yes. Here we go. I'll electrocute myself. You know, my shit can be opened from the outside. <laughs> <laughs> Is Caroline watching? Just in case. No, does it work? Glued? No, it's not glued. Weird thing, isn't it? Ooh. There you go. So here's your vibrating nodule, nodule at the top yeah. there. Nice heavy weight and a bearing here. And then oh, there's your light. And I guess Yeah, there's no way of changing it to a battery powered uh, thing. Unless. Hmm. That's the, yeah. So when I was, when I do it, um, I press, you, know, you push it down, don't you? And then it starts going. That's your on and off button. But yeah. It never felt like it was on or off. It always felt like it was half on and half off. And, and it was kind of, you know, and it kind of just didn't have a, I don't know what the word is. Didn't go. trust it, as you didn't, said. Didn't it just didn't feel right. 
No, no. So, what I might do is put it back on, um, put it on eBay or something. Let someone else trust it. Or not. And then buy the other one. Yeah. Okay. There we go. You know what's inside now? James says, sorry, but off to bed now. You're doing great, both of you. Thank you, mate. Oh, cheers. And Good night. Just, thank you very much. And Matt, before that, could you build one that's not crashed later? Oh, is that to uh, Malcolm, Matt? <laughs> no. <laughs> I do not crash because then you don't have to make them perfect. Well, if, if if weathering didn't exist, I don't think I'd bother doing the hobby. I don't like doing perfect things. Too hard. You know, I'm not a big fan of uh, perfect either. Nope. I've got the skills for it. All the patience. There you go. I'll put that on eBay. Someone else can have it. Yeah, there you go. Anybody wants to buy a used uh, paint shaker, see Malcolm. I have to make sure I can find the um, power that came with it. As the other thing is, it's not. It didn't come with a UK plug. Ah. Mm. So I had to use an adapter. I don't know where that's gone. Oh, have you lost something else? No, it's uh, well, well, it's probably around. I just don't have got time to find it. So it's just the um, the plug for the for that taker thing. I've got a drawer in here that is just plugs, you know, and wires, yeah, and connectors, and God knows what else. Um, and yeah, <laughs> can't find it in the mess. Fail.
Dreamer. Uh, Matt says the last VC of World War II was given to a fleet air Corsair pilot. Fleet air arm Corsair pilot. Was he? That colour's looking really nice. Thank you. You think? Um, I'm liking it. I really am. Um, I'll just do the second thin coat that I'm doing and then leave it to dry. Because it'll need several more coats, at least another four, I reckon. Oh, can you hear that? I bet you can. Oh, yeah. Hmm. What's, what's happened, Malcolm? <laughs> I just plugged in another webcam. Um, ah. Doesn't like it. Oh, it certainly doesn't plug, like being plugged in that hole. <laughs> <laughs> Easy. Well, anyway. Easily distracted. I was awarded posthumously. Guy who's um, uh, the next build I'm doing, yeah, is uh, this one Major, Major James Howard's Mustang, and he was awarded something uh, a very high end medal for something that he did. All right, what was that? I've got the book here, I can't remember what it was. I don't think it was, a, I don't think it's him, it's someone else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is what Matt's written. I think you read them out about the yeah the last VC of World War Two given to a fleet mm. air arm pilot mm. who flew across an area, posthumously. So how's yours coming? Uh, should we knock it on the egg now, Malcolm? Yeah, can do. Cool. Right, so let's have a look at what you've done, how you're getting on. Yeah, sure. Uh, so all I've done is weathered up the cockpit a little bit in there, put some scratches in and some, I don't know, what would you call that? Oily, mucky, rusty rust, I guess. Um, just chipped it a little bit here and there. And then um, I've got a little uh, seat cushion <laughs> that I made at a milliput that I will sand down. And plunk it in there and paint it cool. that color there. Yeah. I don't want to bother with seatbelts because I assume that the leather would probably be destroyed or something. Yeah. And it'll just be a load of vegetation in there anyway. So um, another thing I haven't done is done any detail on the inside there or the other side, you know, the, the insides, because I just don't think you're going to see it. So, no. Yeah. That's enough. And then once I got, once I got the, uh, I've got the sheet cushion in there. I'll just seal it up with a bit of sponge or tissue paper, stick the lid on, and then I'll, and then I'll weather on the inside of here for a bit of mm. muck and green, a greeny kind of colour, and then get it sealed up, and then I'm put, putting the colours on. Looks like cool. How about you? How you know? Me? Give me a sec. Very gently lift it down. Ah, colour's great. Yeah, colour's nice. That's only got two coats on. Huh, well. There we go. Yeah? yeah. Lovely. It's coming along. Uh, very thin coats, as you see. 
what um uh, what kind of color finished color do you want it to be do you want it to be any darker than that or are you going um, for that it color? will probably be a bit darker than that and those bits that you can see the uh the mottling underneath will just be visible mm. as in the uh pictures that i've got um so i'll probably sit this afternoon and uh do some roundels for it yeah um and at this stage uh pop them on spray the roundels and then carry on with the colors cool that's cool so yeah, that's where I am with that. Excellent. So, uh, got some comments. Uh, Dominic says, I like the idea of making the same kit. Hmm. Yeah. Actually, I think we should flip these over like, that's better. No, I'm facing you. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I can see you in the studio. <laughs> Uh, Dominic also says uh, maybe it's fun to do with more people at the same time. Well, there you go. You've got your YouTube channel. Go for it, Dominic. That'd be mm. great. And then Matt gives him a good old thumbs up. It, it so, did take us a while to get it sorted out, though, didn't it? Since February, we were planning this. Yeah, we. I think we started talking about it about this time last year, and we said we'll go for next year. We'll go for February or March. <laughs> yeah. It's well for the planets align, isn't it? Yes, yes, mm. very much so. So, cool. Malcolm, if you'd like to say your batty ties. Okay, uh, cheerio, everyone. Thanks for tuning in and um, watching. Uh, if you're watching later on, hello and goodbye. Yep. Thanks very much. Batty tie. Remember, stay safe, keep modeling, and we will see you. You okay for Friday? Yeah. Cool. We will see you Friday. Mm. Bye. Bye.